Okay folks, welcome to another episode on our channel. Today we are going to discuss something very important in the world of stock investments. Before I proceed, a huge, huge congratulations to Tesla CEO Elon Musk. He is now the seventh richest person in the world, surpassing the legendary investor Warren Buffett. Really, he deserves my shout out. I have great respect for Warren Buffett when it comes to stock investments. He is the one man that I will always stop and listen to when it comes to words stock market investment permutations. For Tesla stock to skyrocket and surpass the one of Warren Buffett, guys, it calls for an appraisal of what transpired in the stock market and its possible implications for stock investors globally, especially as it warms up to join the league of S&P 500. If you are new here, this channel is all about wealth, business and making money online. So if all that interests you, don't feel shy at all, go ahead and smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be informed when we put out new videos. That being said, let's get back into the topic of today. In this video, I'll go through the eligibility criteria for the S&P 500, whether or not Tesla meets those eligibility criteria, whether or not Tesla stocks will be added if the eligibility criteria are met. We will also take a look at what the stock market will look like in terms of buying and selling with the recent astronomical rise in Tesla stock. Finally, we envisage or infer from many expert comments whether the inclusion of Tesla stock in the S&P will happen or not. Now, as of Friday 10th of July 2020, Elon Musk is worth about $70.5 billion, roughly $1 billion more than Buffett, after the company's stock hits an all-time high that day, according to Bloomberg's calculations. Tesla shares continue to surge Monday, 12th of July 2020, and hit another new high. The shares dropped 12% in the morning and brought the company's market valuation to $325 billion, making it the 10th largest US stock market value. Investors now believe that Tesla could report a fourth straight quarter gap profit when it posts second quarter results on July 22nd, meaning it could be considered for inclusion in the S&P 500. The company's stock is up more than 300% for the year, according to CNBC News. For those of you that are new to stock investing, the S&P 500 is considered one of the major indices in the world. It is designed such that investors can invest easily in a basket of big and relatively stable largely US-based stocks through index funds based on it. When a stock is included, many index funds trading the S&P 500 have to buy that stock. Usually, that results in a higher price for that stock. Similarly, when a stock gets removed from the index, many funds have to sell that stock, resulting in lower prices for that stock. Needless to say, insiders of many big American companies love having their stocks in the index. To see whether Tesla might be included in the S&P 500, let's have a look at the eligibility criteria. They are summarized as follows. 1. Companies need to file 10K annual reports to the SEC. 2. That the US portion of fixed assets and revenues constitutes a plurality of the total but need not exceed 50%. Tesla has more than 50% of the fixed assets in the US. 3. Primary listings. Primary listing must be on one of the major US exchanges. 4. The instruments shouldn't be anything special. No ETNs, ETFs, loose end funds, limited partnerships, preferred shares. ADRs, no tracking stocks or multiple class share structures, ETC. Market cap more than $8.2 billion. Trading should be liquid. The annual traded volume should be at least equal to the market cap of the free floats. In addition, at least 250,000 shares should have been traded in each of the six months before the inclusion. Free flows should be at least 10% of the outstanding shares. The company should show a gap profit over the most recent quarter, and some of the gap profits over the last four quarters should be positive. So, those are the eligibility criteria. Now, the big question. Does Tesla satisfy all the criteria? The only eligibility criteria on Tesla does not satisfy is the one for profitability, but it will be satisfied if Tesla reports a profit over the last quarter. Tesla satisfies the first part of the last criterion if it shows a gap profit over the last quarter. Because it was profitable three quarters before the last quarter, a gap profit for the last quarter also implies the second part will be satisfied. Many analysts expect Tesla to report a gap profit over last quarter, and if that happens, then it has satisfied all eligibility criteria. But what would that mean? Would it mean Tesla gets included in S&P 500 index? If so, when? And what will it mean for the stock price? The inclusion criteria are eligibility criteria. Nothing more, nothing less. Unlike the Russell indices, 
The S&P 500 indices are not strictly rule-based. It is the index committee that ultimately decides. And this may be a problem for Tesla. All these rules, except maybe for the minimum market cap, are designed for stability. Unfortunately, Tesla is everything but stability. Save that for another day. But all I gathered remains that it has been accused of serious accounting issues, environmental offenses, insiders have been accused of self-dealing, it has been accused of delivering dangerous products and more generally, of running an unsustainable business. But that's not what I intend to delve into in this video. S&P is an institution with a good reputation built in almost 100 years. If you're a Tesla bull, you should ask yourself, what would you do if you were a member of this S&P index committee? In principle, there isn't any need for quarterly rebalancing for the S&P 500. In their index methodology documents, S&P writes the following. Changes to index composition are made on an as-needed basis. There is no scheduled reconstitution. Rather, changes in response to corporate actions and market developments can be made at any time. In practice, there is quarterly rebalancing, but they can be flexible with it. And on page 10, the methodology document says the following. S&P Dow Jones Indices believes turnover in index membership should be avoided when possible. The context of the second remark is that companies will only have to satisfy the index eligibility criteria before being included, not afterwards. But this remark also suggests a desire to avoid companies that are expected to be in the S&P 500 only for a couple of years. I think this remark implies the index committee prefers stocks of companies that could be in the index for many years, unless they are acquired, of course. This preference of the index committee makes betting on Tesla being included in the S&P 500 risky. It may or may not happen, depending on the weight of fraud risks and business sustainability, as well as the risk on the reputation of the S&P 500. The committee has the flexibility to wait. A good reason for waiting with adding a stock would be to minimize the number of additions and removals, and therefore the turnover in the index membership. For example, they may wait a quarter. If that happens, and Tesla produces a large loss in the third quarter, I suppose it will never be included. I suppose that would solve the problem for the members of the committee. If Tesla gets included in the S&P 500, what will the stock price do? Index arbitrageurs try to guess which stock will be added to the S&P 500 and which ones will be removed. They anticipate on funds, essentially buying the stocks that are added and having to sell the stocks that are removed from the S&P 500. Without doubt, this will be the case if Tesla stock is added. When Tesla finally gets included in the S&P 500, these index arbitrageurs will be sellers to many index funds. With the current buying frenzy, I seriously wonder whether there will be more buyers or index funds than sellers or index arbitrageurs. Judging the stock price increase, it could very well be that there are more index arbitrageurs or future sellers than funds future buyers. In that case, the stock price will go down when Tesla is going to be added. All in all, betting on Tesla being added to the S&P 500 is a risky trade. First, because it is highly uncertain whether it will happen at all. Second, if it happens, the stock may go down as a result of the winding down of overcrowded index arbitrage trades. Also, for many other reasons such as overvaluation, accounting issues and liquidity issues, my opinion on stock is still a strong sell. But hey, I could be wrong. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.